Well, welcome to Papa Bear's Peppers, and I'm Harold. And today, I want to talk about Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. Now, this is something that I want to get talking about now before it becomes a problem in your young seedlings or your overwinters or what have you. Now, I'll admit that I had a problem with my seedlings and I've taken care of it. And I want to share some different ways that we can handle aphids, mites, and some of the different uh, insects that will damage our plants. So for starters, there's different ways that I handle different bugs like aphids, mites, and things of that nature at different times or different places. For instance, in my greenhouse, I'll release green lacewing bugs, or our all-time favorite is ladybugs, or even some of the other type like predator mites that can really help us and, and even getting down into the beneficial nematodes like you see right here. They, they can really do a lot of great for our garden without using anything at all. Now, I do like to be organic with mine and so when I'm inside of I release a bunch of ladybugs, I'm, I'm not gonna have a very happy person on my hands. So when I'm growing indoors, I have a different method or methods of which I handle these different kinds of bugs like aphids and spider mites and even disease control. And here's a few of the things that I like to use. And this is really a cost efficient, cost effective type of a thing, depending on how you are with things. Now, the first thing that I'm going to bring up is a product that I've been using and it's called the Amazing Dr. Zymes. This is an enzyme based pest control and it really does work well. It's great inside of my tent where I'm not able to have a lot of room to spray and, and it's still very, very organic. This is very plant-based and it is an organic type of a solution. Now this is an insecticide and fungicide. I'll show you really close. And it, and it really has different mixing methods depending on what your issue might be. You can do root soak with this as well as foliar spray. Now, I'm getting ready to make a foliar spray, so I wanted to show you really quick how I do that. So, for this particular application, I've got all of my bugs under control, and I'm into IPM, or Integrated Pest Management. This is going to be a weak solution. Now, for a weak solution, I only need a roughly a half ounce of solution of the concentrate for 31 ounces of distilled or reverse osmosis water, RO water. The reason is, is because you want a very neutral. And when you do use a product like this, this Dr. Zymes, you have to make sure that you pH your water prior to making the mixture. Once you've made it, and you should have a 7.0 when you're mixing this. Once you mix it, you don't try and adjust the pH. You have the pH of a 7.0 in your distilled water or your RO solution prior to mixing in the Amazing Doctor Zion. Once it's mixed in, you're fine. Don't bother checking the pH. It's not something that you need to worry about once it's mixed. So I'm going to put in, this is going to be a weak solution. So I'm going to add half of an ounce of the amazing doctor's arms. I just put that in there just like that folks. And I put this in and once it's in my little spray bottle, I shake it up and I'm done. Now, Here's a word to the wise. You do not want to spread this or spray it on temperatures over 90 degrees or when your lights are on or sunlight, direct sunlight, because it will damage your plant and possibly could render this ineffective. So this is something that I like to spread 
and I spray it on either right after the sun goes down and you can still have sunlight, just not direct sunlight. But you spray your plants and just before maybe the lights go out or something like that. And that's what I do. I turn the light on just long enough to spray down my plants and then I turn the light off and I leave this on there overnight. And I've got the bottle marked. You always mark your bottle. So this one's Dr. Zines. Now, that's a very organic, plant-based type of a solution. And for those of you who don't care for any other type and you don't want to release the bugs in, this is a very good solution. While it's a little pricey, it's a very good product. Once you do start doing Dr. Zimes, you'll be invited to do their webinars on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. That way you can have questions answered as you go along. Very good for disease, for mites, for aphids, all of those type of bugs. And it works as a suffocating agent. And again, this is enzyme-based, it's plant-based and will not cause damage to your plants and or your soil. So it's something that you can spray on again. You do it not in direct sunlight or with your lights running. You wanna spray it on and then turn your lights off. It should be when they're going into darkness. So that's one solution that you have. It's very organic. I'd like to bring up one other product that I like to use because what I do a lot of times is rotate what I'm doing for my IPM. Why? I don't want any of the bugs to get used to what I'm using. So, and what I use is a 100% peppermint oil. And it's important that this is a 100% organic, natural peppermint oil. So what I do when I do mine is I'll use anywhere from say a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of this per a gallon of water. Now, if I'm using a smaller bottle, just, you know, you break that down to like drops. For a bottle this size, which is about a 31 ounce bottle, I'll probably use 18 to 20 drops of peppermint oil in there. Now, the other key in there is because oil will oppose water. It's lighter than water and it tends not to mix with the water. So, what I'll do is I'll add a few drops maybe about a teaspoon and a gallon or so of, of an organic type of a dishwashing soap to disperse it in there. It also serves to help dry up those soft shell body bugs. But the peppermint oil has a flavor, a taste, and a smell that drives away not only bugs, but a lot of rodents and pests that may be getting into your garden. It's really an effective spray. It doesn't it just repels them. They hate the taste of it. It's a bitter taste to them. They really don't like it, folks. So, a lot of times when I get done spraying the underside, knocking all the bugs off, a little bit of spray on the underside will knock those spider mites off, those aphids, and then when you spray it with this or a neem oil or the amazing Dr. Zymes, it will kill them, smother them, or in this case, repel them. So they don't want to get back on the plants. So it's a very effective way of handling your plants. Again, it only takes a half of a teaspoon per gallon and you can spray that on your plants on the underside. Remember, always spray either very early in the morning when it has a chance to dry or as I prefer to do, in the evening when the sun goes down or just before I'm gonna turn my lights off, it's important. But this smell will repel a lot of the animals. It'll repel the mites, it'll repel the aphids. They don't like the flavor of it and they just, they they won't stick around to munch on your plants when you spray with them. Now we talk about our neem oil. This is a, a pure cold pressed neem oil. Folks, it's very different than what you're going to find in some of the big box stores. This one I ordered on Amazon, listed for organic use. It's 100% cold pressed. It's free of water or additives. So this is strictly a neem oil. 
when you open this up and then we'll tell you on the back here if it's below 65 degrees temperature inside of here this will turn into a paste so if that happens all you have to do is get warm water just turn your sink on and warm it up and say get it in like a tub like this and let it sit in there and that will liquefy and then you can apply it and that comes to my next point and this is a tip for you out there a true name oil like this needs to be dispersed and one thing is is that a neem oil is obviously lighter than water and it will come together and come to the top you can mix it it'll come right back together and come to the top my sprayer of choice when i do neem oil is a one gallon sprayer and if you'll notice the tip is pointed up and the reason is when i put it on the handle and i spray like this right after it's pumped up I'm able to spray the underside of the leaves, the stems, and everything else. Just FYI, you want to make sure that you're spraying where the bugs would be. And many people, when they're done, the next day they're going to rinse this up. By all means, that's your prerogative. Myself, I don't. I leave it on. If I have a problem, I may do it twice a week. But once I get done, it usually doesn't build up. But again, this is cold pressed neem oil. This bucket is specific for mixing my neem oil. I need two tablespoons of neem oil. And this is my way of mixing it. If you're using neem oil, I highly recommend using a dishwashing soap or other organic dishwashing soap that'll disperse the oil, the cold pressed neem oil. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in there, just like that. And I'll show you in a minute what's going on. As I was referencing before, now, as you see here, you take a look, you can see how it's collected at the top because it cannot disperse water and oil don't mix. So they're, they're actually opposing each other due to the fact that water, oil is lighter than water. So your solution to make a really good mix that stays dispersed, you then come in with two tablespoons of your dish soap. And it is important that you use dish soap because you want it to disperse your neem oil. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna come in and go one, two. Okay, now I have my dish soap. Now again, a lot of people out there will use dish soap only as a, a killer for aphids and spider mites because they are a soft shell body. However, this gives you kind of the best both of both worlds. It's a soap and a neem oil together. They work collectively, the neem oil will choke them out and the soap is going to disperse the neem oil and allow you to apply it evenly and equally on your pepper plants or any other plant for that matter. Here's the other thing, folks. A cold pressed neem oil does not have the strong smell that you would find in, a, in another type of a neem oil product. That's the awesome thing about this. It's not strong, so inside the house, you don't feel like it's like, and if you've ever smelt neem oil out the stores that is not cold pressed, it's definitely strong but this is going to essentially give them diarrhea and kill them. Now, neem oil can be used much like the amazing Dr. Zines. You can do a root soak. I've done complete plant dips. When I had my aphid issue, I dipped the roots, I dipped the plant, I dipped it all. And basically what I did, folks, is I made a solution just like this. Now look at it. 
it's dispersed out and as you see here it's evenly dispersed throughout the water solution okay now in conclusion I like to rotate as I was talking about before I like to rotate what I use for my IPM once you get it under control whether you use the cold pressed neem oil remember your dish soap for dispersing your neem oil so when I'm doing IPM or preventative maintenance I'm doing this every two to three weeks that I'm spraying now if I do my neem oil spray I might come in two weeks and do a peppermint spray over all the bottom side of my plants around it it folks it the 100% peppermint oil will do a lot of good for your plants third on my indoor specifically I like to use my amazing Dr. Zymes and I usually this is dedicated to my inside plants but I will rotate the amazing Dr. Zymes with my neem oil so I will rotate those through folks and, and it just it just helps to make sure that the bugs cannot get used to any one thing they will both effectively take care of your spider mites or your aphids now here's a picture right here of damage that can be caused by spider mites and also a spider mite nest right over on this side aphids a lot of the same things you'll notice those aphids mites you may have to get a magnifying glass a very high powered magnifying glass but you'll look at your plants and you'll see them really getting funny colors to them brown browning up out of nowhere maybe leaf curl you know really just crumpling up the both the aphids and the mites can do that a lot of times you really have to look for mites they're small but if you start noticing things like that happening it helps to get a nice good neem oil on them or again you can go with a peppermint oil but wash those plants off get them very cleaned off and spray them the big key is staying preventative if you stay ahead of them then you're not going to have that problem same thing when you use your predator bugs your ladybugs or your lace wing your green lace wings or any of the other predator bugs that are out there your your beneficial nematodes you use those as preventative you do it before the problem becomes a problem that's why it's integrated pest management you know you're trying to mitigate or you do it before you're gonna save yourself a lot of problems in the end your plants will thrive they won't be set back due to a major attack all right well this is Harold with Papa Bear's Peppers I'm hoping that this helps you and remember start your IPM start doing it now so you don't go through that phase where you're like going ah! the, 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 it's too late get them before it is too late take care of them so that you never have to worry about them well, take care and keep growing.